So it's very rare that I actually repurchase a watch. However, today we're gonna take a look at a watch that I actually have bought twice. This is a Seiko, it's a Seiko Kinetic Chronograph. It has one of the highest end kinetic movements that you can buy. It's a nine series, that gives you an idea that it is pretty high end. It is the SLQ007, sometimes people call it the Jay Leno. It has a few different names. It is a beautiful, weird chronograph, and you guys know I love weird watches. Let's flip the camera and take a look at the SLQ007, a future classic from Seiko. So it's not often that I repurchase a watch that I sold, but here we are. This is an SLQ007 from Seiko. It is a kinetic chronograph. It is funky, it is weird. It has a very weird dial setup. Obviously you have five different little windows on the dial. You have the time here, and then this is the chronograph function. Then you have a little domed date window right there. Of course, you get to see the movement from the back. It has a funky, weird movement as well. I'll do close-ups of it. I actually took the case back off of this watch. I'll show you sort of close-ups of the movement. It is a kinetic chronograph. It is a 9 series. It's a 9T82, which is actually a pretty high-end movement from Seiko. These were very expensive when they came out back in the early 2000s, late 1990s. This was around a $3,000 watch. They went up to around $5,000. Back then, for a chronograph from Seiko, that was very expensive, considering it is also a kinetic chronograph. Now, these are really nicely sized. They have an integrated bracelet look, obviously a true integrated bracelet look. You even have integration of the finishing, so it's sort of brushed down the middle, and then there is polishing on the sides. It's a really interesting style, something that Seiko don't do currently, but they've done a lot of in the past. You have big screws in the actual case, it's actually holding it together. You look at the case back, there is a screwed in case back. You have a screwed in crown as well, uh, but the case is actually uh, a few different pieces that all screw together. It looks good. Um, and like I said, very weird. That's probably the reason why I really love this watch and I always have, and uh, I always wanted one. I bought one probably in the neighborhood of around seven or eight years ago. I sold that watch. I actually made a video of that watch right before I sold it. And I could tell you back then I sold that watch for around $300. I repurchased this watch for $1,000. Dollars, And this is in not good condition, even compared to the version that I had, which wasn't in great condition. This one is actually in worse condition than that one was. Um, and this was a very good price for this watch. These are going for around two or $3,000 now, and the prices have continued to climb. There's a few different reasons. It doesn't look like anything else. Seiko don't make anything like this anymore. They don't use this movement anymore. It's a very complicated, hard movement for them to make. It is a chronograph, it has a mechanical chronograph, and that is mated to a kinetic movement. So it is uh, a watch that actually has a battery cell that needs to be replaced every 10 years, but these don't last all that long. You can see right there, it just started ticking twice. So you can see it does two ticks in one second. The reason why it's doing that is because it is low on capacitor. And a lot of these, when you look at them online, always need their capacitor replaced. A lot of Kinex are like that, not a lot of people service them. These you can get service, you can get the capacitor replaced, but it is a little bit more difficult than your typical kinetic time only or time only with a power reserve, things like that. So definitely something to keep in mind, servicing on this will be more expensive. Sometimes these need to go back to Japan for servicing. But when we're talking about collectible, weird and cool, Seiko's, there really isn't something that is as cool or as weird as this watch. So let's see if the chronograph will work. It will. So there you go. So it's very simple. That's the chronograph. There's a reset button over here. You just have to stop the chronograph and then reset. That's it. Everything actually lines up really nicely on here. Um, and that will take a lot of the capacitor, so you can't leave that running. 
because it will drain the capacitor as well. Now this one, like I said, not in great condition. Uh, there are mineral crystals on the front of this watch. I believe they are not sapphire because these are scratched. These scratches will not come out. And then uh, obviously I believe this is in titanium. The SLQ007 is in titanium. I think it's the, I don't remember which one is in um, stainless steel, but uh, although this is titanium, it is pretty heavy. This might be stainless steel. I'm not entirely sure, but everything that would have told me if it was stainless steel or titanium is gone. So that usually is printed on the top and bottom of the actual case. I think this was somewhat refinished and they did a terrible job of it. All that being said, even though the condition isn't great on this watch, it's still a pretty awesome looking watch very different so it's not something that you're going to see on somebody else's wrist very quickly let's do a quick measurement on this and then we will throw it on wrist and do a loom shot i'm sure the loom not that great on this watch because it is a vintage watch over 20 years old so uh, i'm sure it's not going to uh, be very bright this i think is like a 40 millimeter watch somewhere between 40 and 41 so it's 40.4 i think it's like I think closer to 41, depending on where you measure it. You have these pushers at the top. It doesn't really make it wear bigger. I wouldn't call it a bullhead either because they are on the side of the watch, not really the top. Uh, and they made a few different versions of this. The SLQ001 had a rounder case, was still integrated, and they've made many iterations since. I think that the SLQ007, in my opinion, is the best looking. It's a chronograph, but it's not very thick. 12.6 millimeters thick. Like I said, you do get a screening crown. There is a big lug span on here because of the bracelet, but if you measure it at the case, and really you can't wear this on a strap. They don't make a strap for this. It's 46 and change for the lug span and then an almost 57 millimeters uh, for the effective lug to lug, but it doesn't wear that big. There's really not much out there in terms of straps. They made versions that are on straps or can be on a bracelet or a strap, but again, it won't look the same as this. They might be a little bit bigger, a little bit different. Very quickly, let me throw it on my wrist. Before I do, let me show you what I have on my wrist. You can see a theme here. I love weird watches. I love weird displays of time, especially if it's mechanical, uh, because you know it's harder to do. And because this is technically not mechanical it is a kinetic but it still has that pendulum it's it's you know it's rotating in the back um it just it kind of is just cool i just love it uh and i've been wearing this since i got it i cleaned it up it was really dirty um and you know from far away if you look really closely you're gonna see you know scratches and pot pit marks and stuff like that i'll do close-ups so you guys can see them but I did pay a thousand, literally a thousand dollars for this. I am not that proud of it, but uh, I had to have this back in my collection and I plan on buying another one. I'll probably end up selling this one and buying another one. I'll probably buy that one and then sell this one because I don't want to be without this in my collection. That's how much I love it. Um, anyway, there you go. So very quickly, a loom shot, then we'll wrap up the video. Well, there is no loom shot, apparently, because there is no loom on this watch. I'm not sure if those hands were originally loom. Maybe the loom fell out or it is just, you know, faded to nothing on those hands. Uh, I believe that the hands for the time were loomed. I know that the chronograph wasn't. Unfortunately, I think this doesn't have any loom, but that's not a big deal. Uh, I love this watch and I do want to collect other versions of this watch like that 001. I think it's a good looking watch. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. I want to hear from you guys. What do you think of this watch? I made a video a long time ago about this watch. Uh, it was one of the first videos I did probably around three years ago. I also featured this watch in another video when I was talking about interesting Seikos. Uh, and this is definitely one of them. It was very high on my list of interesting, weird Seikos. And Seiko have made some really cool, different watches that uh, really should be on the collector's radar. I really do believe. And this is something that I think... You know, if you are a collector of Seiko, if you like Seiko, if you like Japanese watches, this is something that should be on your radar because it is something completely different um, and weird. And some people think it's ugly. I don't, obviously. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. I want to hear from you guys. What do you think of this watch? What do you think of the 19 movement? Uh, I want to hear from you guys. Please also don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel. 
and I very much appreciate it. Please follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is Watch Chris Blog, all one word. I have some links in the description. Those links are to Amazon. If you click those links and buy anything, it helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. However, I very much appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.